Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. All right. How do I sound? I'm on the wireless microphone again. So tell me how it sounds. Today's the day I'm deciding if I keep it. So um, I want to know what you guys think. I know that it was low the other day, but I'm thinking that's because the battery was low. So I'm still getting the hang of it. So let me know. Hello. Hello. Hi, Erin. How's it going? <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> What are you up to? Hi, Mrs. Necro. How's it going? Happy Thursday. Happy, happy Thursday. Hello, Dar. Nice to see you again. <laughs> you guys were so funny on that Instagram post about the underwear name. Like, I literally am like, after a stream, I'm like, okay, I got to post what I did. Delete my, I'm live now. Post what I did. And I'm starving usually right then and tired. And I just want to be like off any computer screen and I just want to eat and uh, I just make something quick and then I come back and there's you know 65 million comments and opinions on what they should be called hi Eliza it sounds good okay good that's good I'll switch it to the Yeti so you guys can see the difference because I think you're gonna pick that one but this one's more mobile so hi Susu work 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 yeah yeah you're working uh, like maniac you know, and I, I have full respect for that because I am too. And I love it when I meet another woman who is on that hustle. Like you like to work. I think you do. It seems like it. So hi, Anna. You're finding it a bit quiet, Susu. Sounds great now. Nello. <laughs> it's a bit lower than the intro. Okay. The intro, um, if you guys knew how low I had that, cause I don't know what it is about that intro. Um, but it's like maximum volume, you know. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I don't want to blast any of you. I'm going to switch to my other microphone and see what you guys say. All right. All right, so this is the other one. I can see that it's louder. So you guys are the ones that decide. If you don't like this one, I'm returning it because it was like $200. You know? And if I'm not going to use it, I'm not, I just don't like things sitting around. Girl boss. <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> and I can turn up the intro, but I feel like some people, like, they might be wearing headphones, so. Okay, so let me know what you guys think of this. Hi, Libby. Libby, have I ever told you that every time I see your name, I hear my mom going, um, Libby, 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 on your table, table, table. You will like it, like it, like it. And that's all I know about that commercial song. That's better? Okay. So you can hear that it's louder. So, so this gives you the ability to be able to turn it down or turn it up then, right? You don't have to have it at max volume, which is kind of nice. 
Because I like it when you have a place to go. You can go up or down, depending. I don't like it when I'm already at max. It's so much easier to hear. All right, that's it. I'm, I'm not, I don't really like that it's on me, like this huge box, you know? All right, we'll, we're, we're returning it. I'm fine with that. It'd be really nice to have a mi wireless microphone because it's one less thing to have to coordinate, you know? So, but at the same time, I want it to be, the sound is really, really important to me. Okay. This one has a slight echo. Yeah, because it's, it's further than my arm away. Is your name Paula Quilt Quilting Tex? Is that why you put that? I like that you did that, if that's true. N Hello, Malin. I thought you said Nello. I was really like, Nello. Yeah, okay, okay. You were in seventh grade when that jingle came out. What a pain in the butt, Libby. <laughs> Okay, so if you want to feel like you weren't alone in weird name stuff growing up, with a name like Sarami, I mean, it goes without saying that um, the first day of school was always a pain for me. And I'm, I blush really badly, really easily, and I hate it when people are all looking at me. I know you guys aren't believing this because I, I'm on YouTube, but it's di I don't know what it is about introverts on YouTube, but it's fine. But, um... There was, I dreaded the first day of school and the teacher going down the list, you know, Amy, Samantha, Jennifer, Jennifer, Samantha, Jennifer, you know, David, Michael, and then they would pause. <laughs> They'd be like, and I can tell, like I knew all those kids' last names. I knew in the, where in the alphabet I was. And I'd be like, oh, that's my name. This is my name. Sarimi, Sarami. Or the other one they would do is they would just straight up think it was wrong and say Jeremy. And then they would make fun of my name often, you know, and so I hated it. And then for the rest of the school year, which was every year I was in school, I was fated to marry any Jeremy that went to school, right? <laughs> so woe to the Jeremy that was ever in my grade because he was fated to marry Sarah me. So that was my struggle. <laughs> Hello, Julia Lynn. Welcome. Oh, that's so cool. I'm really glad you liked them. I really love doing that podcast. It was really, they're so awesome. Adina, I was hoping we'd see you today. How's it going? Are you, are you recovered from school? I know your name is Carrie and I kind of like sometimes waffle <laughs> with saying your name or not. <laughs> Right, Aaron? Oh, yeah, but I love your last name, Aaron. My last name was Graves, remember? So, uh, yeah, come at me. <laughs> With a name like Graves? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Serena or Ser Serena, Serena, yeah. I feel like that Serena is a little bit like Tamara, because Tamara can be Tamara, 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 you know what I mean? And it, it was, and there would be like several in my class and they all kind of put the um, accent on a different syllable and I would try and keep straight and I just couldn't, so. Hi, Allison, right? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, when someone, oh my gosh, Allison, you just, you just said it all, yeah. And my mom will latch on to the fact that I'm blushing sometimes. She's like, ooh, look how red you're getting. And that just makes it worse. Oh, one time I saw me, my blush on um, a video and it was, I, in real life was blushing so bad just watching it happen. Oh, Lisa or Alyssa. Yeah. <laughs> Eliza, do you did you ever see that Liza Minnelli? It's Lisa with an S, not Liza with a Z. <laughs> right, Malin, I know. Oh god, Adina. I oh, I did not like Farrah Fawcett's hair. It was so much. I feel like my hair right now is just too much, you know? Mad name was listen people would autocorrect it to listen all the time. Oh yeah, yeah 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 yeah. So one time um, when I was an adult and I I've told you guys this when I moved um, to to Humboldt County, I met a woman who immediately in October was like in October I'm just gonna call you Scaramy Graves. 
<laughs> and I was like, okay, kudos to you for being the very first person to actually think of that one all my life. I can't believe the kids did not come up with scare me. Can you imagine? Like, I can't believe their lack of ingenuity. I'm disappointed and I'm so relieved, so. But it did, and I thought, I thought it was kind of funny at the time, but at the same time I'd be like, I hated my last name, so. Mainly because I didn't have a connection to it. I don't mind that it's Graves. It was just that I didn't have any connection to it, so. <laughs> right, Mrs. Negro? Yeah. <laughs> You're not helping. Yes, lots of Julias. Yeah, Julias and Jennifers. There were so many Jennifers, and I wanted so badly to be a Jennifer. <laughs> there were so many Jennifers, and I was like, I would love to be Jennifer. <laughs> oh, Chelsea and Kelsey. I, yeah, they are both pretty common now. So we could talk names all day. I love that there's so many more unique names that are common now, you know? Because uh, there were a lot of um, kids with really unique names in my school. It was a pretty diverse school. I was really lucky that I had a very diverse high school. And there were so many names and it was great. The the, for the most part, you know, it was just very commonplace to, to meet someone that had kind of a unique name. It didn't make the teachers any better, but um, at the same time, I really liked it because I was just like, yo, another person with a, with a cool name, you know? And there was one gal in three, I think two or three of the years I went to high school, and her name, I'm not kidding, was Jeremy. And so when we would see each other in the hallways, be like, hey, Jeremy, and she'd be like, hey, Jeremy. It was awesome. I loved it. And her name was spelled like Jerome. So I'm sure she fought even more battles with her name. <laughs> I really felt for her. You've heard scare, oh, I've never heard that. I'll call, I'll start calling you Sarah. How am I tall of her? <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get clever. That was for me. I would just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Jeremy. Who cares? I'd still be blushing inside, but I was like, eh, whatever. Hi, Sue. Hello. How's it going? Okay. So, um, this, the next couple today and Saturday, I'm just going to talk about creating your own block. Now, I don't want that to be misleading that I'm going to sit here and teach you how to create your own block. I've actually done that. It's on videos. I still stand behind those. I haven't watched them in a while, but I stand behind those. But it's a lot of work. Like, you have to have a lot of very accurate measurements, and it's a flat pattern method of creating your own block. And a um, um, block and sloper, I will use those interchangeably. From I actually did a little extra research at the last second today to see is there any is there now information out there I can find that determines the difference between them. And so far, I still can only see a geographic difference, and it says that. Um, the UK and Australia use the term block, whereas the United States is sloper. I had no idea of that. I was um, raised on the west coast of the United States, and we said block, and so, which is kind of interesting. I love the word sloper, though, better, <laughs> but I use block a lot. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, Dean, exactly. Hi, Penny. How's it going? You really? Yay! You guys met in real life? Oh my gosh. Penny, I had no idea you were close to Libby until that the other day. Any tips for taking those measurements by yourself? Funny you should ask, Carrie, but in my um, Instagram stories today, I posted um, my friend Kim is has a class on how to take your own measurements by yourself. Um, I don't know anything about the class. I just saw she posted it and I really respect her. She's a knitwear designer and she does inclusive um, knitting, inclusive sizing and knitwear patterns. Um, and she's definitely an advocate as well for sizing. And so I love that she has a class specific for people and it's kind of something called like apocalypse measuring or something like you're the only one there. So, which I love, she's pretty funny. Um, I've never taken any of her classes. I've just known her because we were, you know, she was, uh, she's a yarn dyer as well. Very popular yarn dyer. Um, and her yarn line is Indigo Dragonfly Fibers. And she's Canadian. And she's on like on the east coast of Canada. We're like diagonally. But we've been to the same retreats together. So that's how I know her. And she also got a Beatrice this year too. A dress form. 
So anyway, um, that is what I will refer you to. I do take my measurements by myself a lot and I think the um, best thing to do is to put on a close fitting garment um, and something that you can either mark on it with tape, you can use washi tape, pins, um, you could use washable marker, like the Crayola washable marker so far washed off everything that I've put it on. Um, and I would draw the lines like so that you're measuring consistently and that your garments don't shift. And I would pin the garments like to your undergarments or pin them to each other so they don't shift around so that you're getting very consistent um, spots. And I think that that right there, like it's worth it. Like I know we all think, I can just do these measurements, it'll be fine. How much could it really shift? It can shift a lot. Even just a half inch is going to be a pain in the butt. If you lose a half inch, say in your crotch depth, that's, that's wrong, right? So you really need that. So um, I think like if you're gonna do it by yourself, that's what I would do. I would put a close fitting garment on, especially if you're gonna do this site that I'm gonna talk about today. Um, they had a lot of measurements and I was being pretty cavalier. I will admit I was being a little cavalier, but I've actually measured myself a lot. So I kind of knew and I had a dress form to refer to, which was really, really handy. So. That's what I would suggest. So um, then uh, you can do the flat pattern drafting method I have in those videos. But I'm gonna talk about three different ways to get blocks. And yeah, so let's talk about what a block is. So a block is like a second skin. So basically there's very little ease. You can breathe in it. You could stand here like this in it. <laughs> You know, like it's not something you would wear out and about because it's just something that is like a, like, like the base of where your pattern's gonna go from. So into style lines, having ease. And the reason you don't put a ton of ease on it is because what if you planned on drafting a form fitting garment, you might not want to have to take off ease because you're just starting to make it less accurate. So it's just nice to have something that's kind of neutral basically and it's not also something very attractive you know because there's just no style lines on it it's pretty vanilla you know it's just pretty boring so um you're going for something that fits you really well and has your darts where you need them your shoulder line the slope your armhole you have a sleeve that goes with it and we're and I'm talking about the bodice sloper and block you can also make them for your lower half as well and then when you like what you want to do with a block or so okay so wait let me let me not get myself off track it's like my head starts going because I really uh, this is very normal for me to, to use a block most of the pattern drafting I have done in my life, especially for me, I have a block and that's what I start with. Not everybody drafts their own patterns. And when I started live streaming, I had to stop doing that because not everybody has their own block and makes custom patterns in it. What use of it is for me to just draft my own pattern and sew it on camera and be like, oh great, that's nice, good for you. You know, so I transitioned to using a lot of home sewing patterns and I've been, I've sewn more home sewing patterns since I've live streaming than I ever have before I live streamed in my 35 years of sewing. Hey Sydney, how's it going? So, um, I think like it is kind of a niche thing but if you're really getting into sewing, you're probably gonna keep coming back around to the fact that you might want it. So what can you do with it? So the two main things you can do with a block or slope or whatever you wanna call it is design your own garments from scratch. And what's great about that is all you're really worried about is the style lines and getting those correct and getting the proportions of your style lines correct with your fit of your garment and you've already solved the fit issues right so you're like oh hey i would like a button down um, um, top that has a cut on sleeve with a peter pan collar you know um and i also want a peplum well your block you can do all that right no problem and it takes 
so much less time sometimes than using another person's pattern to get there sometimes, right? Okay, so the other thing you can do with it is adjust the fit of home sewing patterns that are in front of you. So if you're like, I always have to do this one shoulder adjustment and I always have, always have to do an FBA or um, maybe you have to, to make the bus smaller, you know, whatever it is, then you can use that as kind of a guide for your pre-purchased pattern and kind of get that pattern to the fitting point so much faster because you're, you've already addressed that with your block or sloper. Good morning, Megan. You're absolutely welcome to lurk. <laughs> You're working as well, or I mean lurk or work. Yeah, lurking, working. Yeah, exactly. I do it all the time. <laughs> so those are your two main things. Now a block or a sloper, and not everybody wants to put the effort into making one of those, and that is totally fine. You are not a less of a sewist if you don't want to make a block or a sloper. Like for reals. Like it is definitely a whole other little niche and avenue to take your sewing and it's probably for those those people that are kind of interested in design and kind of always veers away from the home sewing pattern and is just kind of like hmm I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna do this to it but if you're if you enjoy that like doing the kind of mods like oh I'm gonna take the top of this and the skirt of that go for it like there's nothing wrong with that I do that a lot and I, I, do, I would do that even more if I wasn't live streaming no, I know you would like to see that sometimes, but at the same time, it, it just becomes a very hard thing to search on YouTube. So am I here just to do whatever I want? Yes, but at the same time, I have to be found a little bit. And so I can't just always be doing completely unique things. I do a lot of really unique things um, and it already kind of probably hurts my channel. So it has to be something that someone's looking for so that I can help as many people as possible and we have a bigger community, right? So like, like right now, I'm, I've actually bought fabric to make a rug. <laughs> I really want to try making a rug for my bathroom that is basically like a quilt top and I'm going to put non-skid material on underneath and I'm like, do I stream that? Do I record and upload it? Or do I just do it and not tell anybody? You know, so that's kind of the thing, the struggle I'm always kind of battling with what I do here. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I would like to do more pattern drafting with you guys and I feel like if a few of you had your block sloper, I'm hoping more than a few of you will, we could actually go, hey, I'm going to draft this pattern this month and here's the, I'm going to give you two collar options and two sleeve options and um, what do you guys think? And then we draft it once a month. Yeah, sure, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Attempting to, oh, my street, my, my, uh, are you guys still there? It says disconnected, but I still see myself. Nope. Wow. Oh, my back. Wow. That was weird. Did it really reconnect? That's crazy. Okay, Denise. Okay, cool. All right, <laughs> you guys are into the rug stream. All right, so wait, am I there? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> nice, Ray. Hi, Ray. I think I saw you earlier and say hi. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. That's weird. Did you see that flash on the screen? I hate tech issues. Okay. I'm talking way too much anyway. So, um, all right. So this is my last little thing. The, um, other thing I want to say is I, like I said, I'm not really teaching you how to draft your own block because I've done that before. And I really found like, I'm just going to be really honest. I think it was just too much work for a lot of folks. A lot of folks did it, but then I think they got stuck or they didn't get to finishing it. And that is, that is so like, I, so understandable in my opinion. So I think um, I would really like to make it a little bit easier, more accessible for you guys. Okay, good. You guys missed the blip. Yeah, it was quick. I was watching it. So, so this is the three. This is the three ways I think you could make a block without having to draft it from scratch using measurements. You can use one of the custom 
websites that you put in your numbers and it spits out a block and I'm trying one of those out today and I learned about I've learned about a bunch of them and I'm gonna make a resource list by Saturday for all of you um, and then you can purchase a block I have to look at this list because I knew one of these keeps surprising me you can actually purchase a block now that means that this is this is how I feel about that I feel like for a lot of folks especially people that are curvy they are already like I am so over trying to find patterns in my size I am already struggling with home sewing patterns coming in my size I am already doing a ton of pattern alterations to make this in my size and it is so aggravating for them and I and I totally agree with you do I think every pattern company is ever going to do every size? No, I just don't. I don't, and no amount of pressure is going to make any of them change. Um, but you know what? What I really like is I like seeing that there's more and more home sewing patterns that only cater to curvy sewists. <laughs> like, leave us out. Like, you guys deserve it, you know? So, I feel like because you can shop for a pre made block sloper, and there are some for all sizes you are putting yourself in that oh boy here we go again i'm making a pattern from by someone and it's kind of might be a little bit anxiety inducing because we can't try them all right so oh i know libby yeah I can't believe, yeah, I could totally talk about that. There are, there are so many people that started their channels this year and they're like at 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> so, where are those curvy patterns? Yeah, exactly. So, um, by Saturday, I'm going to have a few resources for you guys. And um, there is an excellent post by Joe Hassler on Instagram. She is one half of Punk Frockers. And there's been a big discussion on what pattern companies have sizes that go up to seven, a 70 inch hip. And it's done by page. Um, and so, but B, I'm sorry, there's pages and each page is like, okay, these companies go up to size 54 inch hip. These companies go up to size 60 inch hip. These go up to 70 inch hip. And in the comments, there's other pattern companies like, hey, I go up to this, I go up to that. We're new, we have this and that. So I highly recommend checking out that post and I'm going to make my own version of something like that. But also, um, and I have that available for you on Saturday. And I'm also going to look through that list of patterns and see what I, I'm going to try my best to look at all those pattern companies and look for patterns for the third way I think you could make your block. And that is by using a pre, uh, like a, like a home sewing pattern, like, you know, the scout tee or whatever. I wouldn't recommend that, but you know, like, like a pattern you've heard of and using that as your starting point for your block. I think that's a great way to do it, especially if you have a pattern you've sewn a lot and you're like, oh, I love the way this fits, or I've already I've tweaked it so much and I've changed it to where it fits me the way I like now. I know what to expect from this pattern. Start with that. There's nothing wrong with starting with that. As long as you're, you have some options, like you know where the darts and the apex are, or you've put those on there so you can kind of manipulate the pattern into different shapes, I think that's great. So. Yeah, I think you should totally do that, Miss Necker. I think it's a great idea. Absolutely, Adina. Yeah, and there's a lot of discussion about that on there, Adina, because they were talking about how um, Cashmeret focuses on busty, right? Being busty. And there are a lot of women that are like, yeah, but my belly is bigger than my hips. So I'm really narrow. I'm, you know, I'm shaped this way. And so I really like that they were talking pretty candidly about what pattern companies don't work or do work for certain body shapes. And so I think that that, um, it's just a body and it's just a shape, but it, there's so much wrapped into it for emotionally for all of us. I'm there with you on that one, you know? So, so those are the three ways, just to recap, you can do a custom one where you input your measurements. I'm gonna go over a free version today and then there's paid ones. And I saw one recommended on the Curvy Sewing Collective, which I'm gonna link right now 
in the chat. Um, well, actually, I'm going to link this article, too. I don't know if any of you know about the Kirby Sewing Collective, but I think it's a really great resource. Where am I? Here? Here I am. <laughs> oh, really? I love it. Okay, so this is um, the Kirby Sewing Collective. And then they reference... Uh, pattern string codes for making a block. Um, and today I'm going to be testing out the block by, um, you need to just stop that computer, by freesewing.org. So we'll see. I'm, I'm only trying this one today because it's the first one that I found because someone told me about it. I'm sorry I'm not really up to speed on all the um, possibilities for these things out there. To to be just really honest, I just have never needed them. And I, I, I'm sorry to like say that, but that's just the truth, right? I have had the skills to make my own patterns for a really long time. I've never searched for these things. So this is kind of a new category for me as well, but I'm ready to attack it. I'm kind of into it, so. All right, so this is my one that I printed out on free sewing. It's called the Brianna. And you can see the dart is kind of in a weird position. It's right smashed up against the armhole. And so this is the one I'm gonna cut and sew today really quickly, and we're gonna put it on my dress form. So yeah, I know it's not taped together. I'm sorry, I'm really busy these days. So I, it took me a while to figure out the schematic on how to put these pattern pieces together, and I really don't think you can see it. But there is a very faint, behind these three pattern pieces, there's a very faint schematic. And it shows you what page number each of these, pa these pieces is on. It says right here, row one, column one. So if you do this and you're looking there is a schematic behind this. You just can't see it on the camera. And then in each corner, it tells you where these pieces are at. And you start here at the bottom left corner. And you go like this and you go up. So it's different than other places. That's awesome, Jen. Have you um, done much of their stuff then? Because I haven't, but um, a lot of guys have come into the chat and said, oh, I just sew a lot of the patterns on free sewing. And I was mistakenly thinking it was a completely different website. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then when I learned about this, I was like, oh, this is what these people were talking about. <laughs> this is a legit website. The other one I was like, mm, you know, so it's four across. I, this is how I do PDFs too. I just nip off the corner. See, I just I just stack it like this. Cut off the corner. When there's a bounding box like this, I just snip it off. It makes taping it together so fast, you know. I don't like, this is the only thing I require of sponsors, even though we don't get them very often, is that I get a print pattern from them. Because sometimes when there's 42 pages, that takes way too much time for me to put together. We too much time. But this is only, um, what, 12 pages? It's not too bad. And this is the basic bodice, front, back, and sleeve. So you get all three and it's free. I, I, I kinda, we've been talking about the, the measuring process on this site. It's pretty fun, <laughs> kind of funny, and a little bit like, really? So I will warn you, when you go to the site to do this, the first question it asks you is your neck measurement. Now most people who identify as female are not used to providing their neck measurement for pretty much anything. <laughs> so that was a little bit like, all right, now I'm doubting every single measurement on this website. Um, but that is a very common reference in men's clothing. It's a, it's a very common tailoring thing. So 
All right, one more row, I think. Yeah. I don't like this whole going uh, bottom up because, yeah, it's like going off my table. Here we go. It's a little harder to line up. And then I'm going to show you my block. It's not com completely done, but it's really, really close. And I draped it. So this, oh, that's the fourth way you can do a block if you have a dress form, is draping it. But I feel like that's even more obscure for most folks because um, a custom dress form is definitely, um, I don't want to say unique, but it is kind of unique. It's not very common. I have a video plan to use with my dress form. Thing. Yeah, you absolutely, <laughs> this is Necro. We need to send you a care package. <laughs> How do you live without a tape dispenser? I have like six of them in my life. <laughs> you know what the key to a tape dispenser is? Heavy. Go to garage sales and find the heaviest tape dispenser you can find. And make sure it still has this little thing. Because look, this isn't the one that came with mine. I know way too much about tape dispensers. All of them way too small. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that was the other thing about it. Me and Melinda have both done this now. And so um, you put in your neck measurement, and then it's like, okay, here you go. Here's your profile. Now we're going to measure you. Okay, and you, you need to pick a pattern, and then you get to do your measurements. I ended up just staying on my profile and putting in all the measurements, even the ones I didn't need to do my block because I was there already, and I knew that that was a gift to myself in the future. <laughs> so I... Um, you sit there and you go down the list and it, and it guesses it. It's like, we think that this is going to be 36.2 and you're like, really? And then you measure and a lot of times it's either, it's just like, it's all over the place. Like for me, um, there were, there were most of the time they were, they were off. They did not guess correctly. But other times I was kind of like, oh, that is so different that it made me remeasure a few things and um, they were closer than me. I had been measuring kind of badly. So you don't have a tape dispenser. Wow. No, <laughs> this is Casey. You guys, I was a professional pattern drafter. Cut me some slack. Yeah, Libby, I didn't know you could do that. So that's in there. There you go. That's another tip. Because it's not like you need your neck circumference for a block. You need your neckline. That's different than your neck. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to make chokers or bow ties. Great. Get rid I'm getting rid of all this stuff. This one, we're gonna. Now the guesses were really entertaining. Um, I've said this a few times, it made me really competitive. <laughs> I was like, oh really? You really think that's gonna be 36.2? Well, we'll see. And I'd be like, no, oh, 36.4. Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, and I'm definitely, I'm gonna tape the back. You guys, I'm really hard on my stuff, so I have to. Especially because this one has this really narrow strip right here. Um, you can, uh, I'm pretty sure you can choose what seam allowance you have. I think you can also choose if it shows. I can't remember, but I would opt for it showing. Or you can just leave off the seam allowance if you want. Traditionally, blocks and slopers don't have seam allowance, but I, after I got out of college, I always drafted them with. This one is from Free Sewing, Eliza. Yes, it's the third link that I gave you. Oh, interesting, Malin. I don't remember now. The one that really, really threw me for a loop was a lot of the... Um, crotch depth and height and um, length ones because they called it something slightly different 
And I had to do those myself because my dress form doesn't have that um, function. Like it's it's a, not a pant form. My poor tape, I really need a new tape measure. This little thing is so mangled. All right. So I did the Brianna, but I noticed on that there, there that there's another block and I'm not sure what the difference is between the Brianna and another one, the other one. So, yeah, yeah, Brianna. Sorry, I just saw that in chat. I didn't look to see, could you even read that? Yeah, you could. There we go. All right. Um, let's see. I really wish I had better fabric for this, but I'm gonna use the back of this fabric here. All right, so let's try. So Malin, did you just leave this dart here until you figured out if it worked for you or not? I doubt. I used to be able to fit my bodice across a uh, piece of fabric. <laughs> then I growed up <laughs> and out. <laughs> I'm gonna put my front here and then my sleeve right there. Oh, oh, how did I not notice that? Interesting. Okay. Oh, maybe I'll save this. Maybe I'll save that. <laughs> I saw you in a live stream the other day. Um was that I don't I try not to chat in other live streams sewing ones because I don't want people to think I'm trying to promote my channel I said hi in one of them because I saw you there Eliza but then I did no one said anything so I was like yeah maybe I shouldn't stay here <laughs> um I actually wish I would have put more seam allowance at the center front I don't, they they uh, angle the the tips. That's so interesting. All right. So let's mark the darts. Should have just used my rotary knife. It's just a muslin. Hey, Barbara. Yeah, and Jay Stearns. Exactly. That's awesome. I hadn't been, I, I know she doesn't stream very often, but um, I always miss the others. So this one um, has the apex marked, and, and you don't want to lose that. You really need this for your dart manipulation. Especially if you plan on using your block to compare to a home sewing pattern that you plan on sewing and you want to apply all your changes to it, you need this because that's the center of your dart goes straight through the point to there and that's where you pivot. You pivot all of this. All right. Now I need to, it's just muslin. So honestly, I probably could have cut a hole, but I don't really want to do that. I think me too. I, I You know, Eliza, it's funny because the last couple I've caught hers and I'm like, this is a good time. I don't even know what time it was. <laughs> it might have been like on a Friday afternoon. Friday is, I was gonna, I was about to say my free day, but oh my God, you guys, it's not free at all. It's like my day, I'm like, all right, we can get a lot done today. So I'm free to work like a crazy person, you know? Try not to use that term anymore, but I'm having trouble substituting it. <clears> 
<clears throat> so this right here, I'm going to show you. That right there is what I'm talking about. You need this right here. This is your apex. So basically it's the fullest point from which you're shaping away from. So basically, you know, because I have a boob right here and I don't over here, I need to like get rid of the fabric to kind of shape it, right? So you could you could do darts around anything you wanted, you know, an, an elbow or a belly or whatever, you know, your butt, you know, but classically you're gonna see it here or you're gonna see it like maybe um, at the back of your waist because, you know, your shoulder is another mound on your body. Are those roses on the fabric? They are birds. Look at it. This was a fabric we did on the, in the last season. But we didn't cut it all. Can you see it? So it's always, it was always really imperative that we had, oh wait, I was going to do a sleeve here. That we always had a black, white, and red group. And sometimes we just couldn't find a fabric we would really like for that. And so this one, this was the lining to this right here. I don't know if you can, can you see that? I have my dress form right here. This was the lining. And then the binding was this little black and white speckle. It turned out really cute. But it does look, it looks pretty dated here. This got quite a crease right there. All right, that cap looks really narrow. Oops. I think if you're, I'm kind of surprised that I, that I put a quarter inch seam allowance, to be honest. I think a half inch is better because you kind of need room when you start fitting it to make sure that it's actually, you know, like you want to be able to let it out or pinch it in, you know. Quarter inch does not give you much room for that. Where's the notches? Did I just chip my uh, blade? Did I just touch it with something? Did I just touch it with something? I got a nick in it now. All right, I don't see a front and a back on this sleeve. Why? Why is there no front and back? Okay, well that that's kind of a problem right there. You, you do need a front and a back. But we can fix that. Kirby! Hi, Zach. Nice to see you. Yeah, Zach, have you made a lot of free sewing patterns? I think I asked you this. You were here recently. Oh my gosh, Kirby. I haven't had a mod in the chat in so long. Okay, you guys can get wild today. <laughs> yeah, Kirby, right after I went live, Kirby's all, hey. <laughs> texted her. I'm like, did you just think I was live? She's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm just going to cut this off. Oh yeah. I just nicked my blade somehow. The dots is the front and the X is the back. What? Oh, wow. Thank you, Zach. But the, the sleeve, all right, so if I try and line up the sleeve, there's definitely something about it. Cause look at that. If I line up the, sh the armhole underarm point right here, I'll just do that, right? This has to sew together. So if I do that, look at how offset it is. Oh, 
if I line it up like this, it's off. So I it looks like I taped it together well. I, I can fix that, but that's it means the sleeves off balance, which is kind of I hate to say it, but it's kind of a massive no no. <laughs> you know, because I don't know if you can see it, but so if this is what you would do, you would line up your underarm points right here, right? And then that would be the center of your sleeve. Yes, this is scooped a little bit, so there is a little bit of difference, but that's a problem. This would, this is like the equivalent of, um, to put it in terms you guys will definitely understand, your pants torquing. <laughs> Can you record the other one, Mrs. Necro? You have a couple of shirts, but you didn't like the sleeve. It didn't have. There you go. That's the problem right there. That's that's um that's um I I don't even know what to say to that, about that. I need to set it aside right now. <laughs> I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm very disappointed. All right, so this is the back, and I'm gonna put it on the fold. If we like this, I'll show you how to fix the uh, sleeve. <laughs> yeah, I did something to my blade. But I can see the date that I put it in my thing, so it's fine. It's, it's time to change it. <laughs> this one, oh no, it's fine. So Kirby, if you're still here, this is a really great chat to ask about your sewing machine question if you want. <laughs> you're, you, hate it. <clears throat> you hate it when your pants tw twerk. <coughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, that is pretty cool that they had that. All right, this is extra fabric. All right, let's mark our starts. Um, I know people, I'm pretty sure people in this chat have that machine you're interested in. Um, and there are people in this chat that have switched over to using an industrial as well. So it's a really good, they love talking machines in here. Sometimes I have to tell them, knock it off. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Yeah, right, Malin? Exactly. I think that's a good idea. I never tell them to knock it off. If they they're the boss here, really. I keep I have marked my darts. Um I've made them so hard to mark like I ugh. I've made this hard on myself. You wanna mark them from the wrong side. You try being live on camera and doing this crap. <laughs> Just teasing. I'm feeling a little bit saucy today. Oh, that's cool. That I didn't know that that was the difference. You can only watch VODs if you're a subscriber. That makes so much sense to me. I had no idea. Because I, I can see VODs on certain people and I can't on others. And I'm always like, huh, wonder why they don't upload them. All right, we'll leave the apex marked on the right side. But we're going to mark the darts on the wrong side. Yeah, Kirby, you, crowd, you crowdsource your info here. Cause I know like T Terry's not here, but Adina also has an industrial. Who else has the, the Juki tea, whatever? <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. Yeah, exactly. We don't have mods in here. 
I, um, my only worry about not having a mod in here sometimes is if we got some kind of troll in here that just started saying bad, really bad stuff. That's it. I have no problem drawing boundaries, um, or shutting stuff down. Like that, that's no problem for me. It's just what if I won't, don't see something happening? The only weirdo we had was the person that was like, and it was such an innocently nice comment. Don't forget to change the oil in your car. <laughs> That's all they said when they left. <laughs> and I don't want to take care of prisoners, brat. <laughs> Are you kidding? I am a live and let live, but you better take care of yourself if you want to, so. <laughs> There's something in my hair. There it is. I did that the other day and it was a bug. I hate it when that happens. All right, uh, let's look at my uh, dress form here. All right, is it back on here? Still nothing. Pattern table and iron. No. Yeah. Yes, what? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back on this one. Okay, so when when are you seeing me here? So it's my face cam. It's my face cam? What? Well, that's really weird. All right, well, I have a workaround for this. No. I'll do that. 
Okay, tell me, am I still here? Well, the thing is, the cam the camera doesn't have this. I don't use the sound from the camera, you guys. You would hate that. <laughs> that is so weird. So something's up with my face cam. All right. Okay. So this works. Okay. 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 Is this is exactly remember um, when I was finishing this dress and I switched to my only my face cam and it didn't work. That's it was the same thing. Same exact thing. Same um, camera. All right. Let me let me check my microphones here, and then I'm going to. Why is that showing up? All right. Well. Okay. Cool. All right. So this is my uh, dress form. I will start over from the beginning. So this is my custom dress form that was made for me by Beatrice Forms and someone very kind gifted this to me. And so what happened was um, I got scanned by my husband holding his iPhone <laughs> and then Beatrice makes a dress form based on the scan. So I have a cover on mine which makes her a tiny bit bigger and she's also a little bigger. She's not actually bigger than me but it feels like she's bigger than me because um, I feel like in general, between the grabbiness of the fabric of the form and because, you know, I was breathing during that scan, she's a little bigger, but it's it's actually great. Like this dress fits on there the way it fits on me. It feels a lot easier to wear on me than in the form because the form is like, the gra it's the grabbing the fabric, right? So I can trust that things on here when they're snug, how they're gonna fit on me. So you kind of get the hang of it, it's pretty cool. So this is, I draped my block last year, about a year ago, um, and I, those videos are up. They're in the, probably the pattern drafting how-to list. And then I drafted a sleeve. And so here's my issues with this right now. It probably looks pretty good on camera. I don't have this pinned, so it's kind of swinging. So I can pin it, but you know, the fact that it fits without being pinned is, is a good sign. You know, you know then it's balanced, it's hanging free. You don't really want to pin something to the dress form. You, you want to pin it to itself. So this is what I would say is wrong with this. Oh, the, the, the darts are too low. I would want to raise them up a little bit like this, but then make sure I leave the bottom half the same. So I want to do that maybe. And in the back, it's a little bit loose. I could probably bring it in a bit, right? These aren't very critical because remember, this is my sloper and my block. As long as I know what's back there and I know how to um, adjust my patterns accordingly, that's fine. You can do whatever you want. So you, as long as you have where your darts are, I would like it closer. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. I would like it closer because then that way I know anything I add adds ease, right? So. Um, the other thing I noticed, oh, is that I have too much ease in this sleeve and I feel like this is the trickiest part about a custom dress form is your shoulder line. So it's a very personal preference thing where your edge of your shoulder is. And me and um, Allison talked about it a lot because she said, this is the one thing I find really fascinating. I really like seeing where people put their shoulder line. And then I kind of agonized over it and I kind of felt like, oh my gosh, you know, um, I don't want to pick that. I'm a professional and I don't want to pick that. I kind of want them to pick it, but they don't. So you put a little dot on your shoulder where you think you want it. And so I remember at the time going back and forth like pretty drastically of where I wanted that. And so I'm still getting the hang of where I decided to put it. And I feel like this right here is the absolute like edge out here. And that I would have liked more room here so that I would have known. Because like this right here has seam allowance, you know. Right, so it, if anything, <clears throat> anything inward on this dress form is too far in. You know what I mean? Like I feel like this is where I want things, not any further in. So the other thing is your neckline. You kind of want a nice neutral neckline. 
This isn't all the way up to the base of my neck, so that's a slope. A traditional sloper would be all the way up here. A traditional sloper is what's on my dress form. It's an exact replica of me, but these are princess seams, not darts. And so this is, you know, this is your neck shoulder juncture, your neck to your body juncture. We don't typically wear things like that. Um, no, I drafted, I draped this one, Libby. The one I drafted from measurements, I used, I didn't have this dress form at the time. I only had a junior sized dress form, but you, you can see me put it on the dress form at the end. So it, it but that dress form was not me. It's more my daughter's size. And that was my only dress form at the time. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I got that. I did that right before my Beatrice. I knew about my Beatrice, but it took months to do that. So, so I drafted it not from my measurements, which I think was also a really good thing. I took measurements on the dress form, and then I drafted blocks flat, and then I went, <laughs> and I tried it on, and it was actually fine. <laughs> Just like we all do. <laughs> but I had to do it live on camera. <laughs> And it, it was, it worked really good. Granted, you know, that little dress form doesn't have a lot of fit issues. Is it hard for that dress form to shop in stores just like it is for most people? It is. She was very small. <laughs> My daughter had lots of woes shopping and it, she's almost identical to that dress form in size. But, you know, it's, it still was a lot easier you know, I'm, it's not a person going, yeah, but I don't like the way that fits, you know. She was a very easy customer, that dress form, so. All right, so that's what I, this is where this one's at right now. And like I said, I think I would, you know, maybe I would take this in right here. I don't know. See, my belly, you know, it goes right across my belly here. Wait, I just kind of adjusted something, didn't I? So you can see the, the fabric kind of grabs it. It kind of fights me a little bit. So I could probably take this in a little bit here and here. Um, this is also a really good opportunity to make your pattern fit you if you're very asymmetrical. Everybody is asymmetrical, some people more than others. And um, having a dress form or a block is really helpful for that. If you're just like, wow, I have to, I, not only do I have to adjust the pattern, I have to draft, draft, adjust the left and the right differently or um, the, the left and the right front differently, but the backs are the same, you know, like there's a lot of variation, so. Hmm. I don't know, did Kirby get any help with her machine? Maybe, maybe not, huh? Sorry, Kirby. I, I got sidetracked with the, the microphone. Why is this still on? Stubborn. I lost that yesterday, remember? All right, so now let's let's sew my other one and then try it on. That's gonna be the fast thing. All right, so. All right, I'm just going to change my camera. I'm gonna bring my dress form over. Am I gonna do that? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm like scared to because of the camera and microphone now. <laughs> nice to go over. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe I'll change that. There, yeah, we go. Oh, and the mic. Almost done. Where can I put this? Okay. Hopefully, I don't bother. 
bump anything and make this loud for you. One chair now. <laughs> it saves me a lot of space. It's very zoomed in. Bags with vinyl. You just need a vinyl foot. A uh, Teflon foot. Do you have a Teflon foot? I didn't hear your alert, Ray. Did you hear your alert? I don't even see it in the feed. Okay. All right, so let's uh, sew this block together. So really all we need to do, we don't need to finish any seams. We just need to sew our darts and our shoulders, our side seams, put the sleeve in. This shouldn't take very long. And um, then you're on your way. So this is the best part. So when you're doing your block, it feels like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, it's gonna take forever. It really, between putting the measurements in, taping it up, I'm even going to just backstitch my dart because we're living on the edge right now. So if you're kind of like, I don't want to spend, you know, days on something like this. Once I feel like the measurements probably will take as long as taping this together and sewing it up. You know? All right, so we have our back darts. It's the sleeve. Let's do our front. Oh, I was gonna do this uh, so that we didn't have to look at the black print. I'm really sorry about that. Okay, it's because it's a little bit busy. Actually, I'm gonna take that out. Oh, okay. living dangerously with my uh, back stitching. All right, so this is that gigantic side dart that goes right up to the armhole seam. The darts are balanced, which is great. I was a little worried after the sleeve thing. So when you fold your dart on the legs and you're matching up your notches, right? and you fold, put the fold line on the point of your dart, you shouldn't see torque lines across. If you do, then I recommend trying to adjust it a little bit because those torque lines might, might bug the fit. Of any pattern. I'm not saying their pattern, I'm saying of, of any pattern. <laughs> you missed a lot. I don't think so, Adina. Uh, but Adina, um, Kirby's looking for machine, machine, um, recommendation. Yes, Mrs. Necro. Oh, vinyl and multi -layer. Okay, so you need something a little heavier duty. Oh, that's cool. That's great. Yeah, maybe buy something used to Kirby. You know? That, I think that's a good option because I think eventually if you're serious, you're going to probably want to go industrial. It's just so much faster and consistent. And it can be calibrated to what you're sewing. Like when you buy it, you can say, hey, here's my fabric. I want it to do this. I just sold machines. Yeah, you're going to want to definitely do this with woven and, you know, muslin or a bed sheet or um, 
you know, just something simple, plain weave, nothing, you know, nothing, um, you don't need to use fashion fabrics. I think a solid is ideal or something, even a horizontal stripe could be interesting. And I also think, um, one of the things, like say I was draping this, I would probably put a bust line on there. I would put, um, an apex, you know, like the apex and I would at least put the apex on there. That way you can kind of see on the body where it's at. The kitty didn't dance. Yeah. And I see your notification in the chat, but I don't see it in my feed. You know, that happened right after the blip, didn't it? Or no, that happened after the microphone. <sighs> Weird. Come on, YouTube. Keep up with us. We're busy people here. All right. Uh, okay, we have all our darts. Oh, my gosh. I sewed some of these darts. I still sewed them all with the... Oh, well. It's fine. I didn't want this... I didn't want this print to be on the outside, but you know what? I'll just fit it um, inside out. <laughs> all right, so we're going to put our shoulders together and the side seams together and I have to remind myself it's only a quarter of an inch seam and that is probably why they angle it <clears throat> so you remember your seam allowance. I used to work for a, a, a place that did that. It was kind of a pain in the butt but it is kind of helpful. So instead, they, I mean, you never notch seam allowance. Any pattern company that does, I'm always kind of surprised because um, it's a lot of extra work, you know. And it makes the seam kind of fragile. All right. Let's do side seam. A flannel. <laughs> A flannel, I, it would work, but at the same time, it might be a little grabby. This is so weird how this dart is. <laughs> it's so big. I, you should press it, too. I'm, I'm going for... <laughs> I'm going for speed right now. I don't like that that doesn't reach the seam allowance. See? Very fixable. Ah, that's the one I think she's interested in, Eliza. The Juki TL 2010. Hi, Elena. How's it going? It's been exciting. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the machine I have, Kirby, the one that Libby just wrote in there. Mine just has electronics, and that's the thing is, like, you can get this machine so cheap. That's why I was asking you, like, are you going for... So, yeah, there's a clutch motor and a servo motor. One of them you can hear when the machine is on. And um, I think most of them come with the servo, don't they, Libby? What does mine have? Why did you switch out your motor? Was it just the sound? You might know more about that part than I do. I used to know about that and I don't remember any of it. It's just gone. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do that a little more accurate. Alright, so now we have our little bodice. Now we have our sleeve. Let's set it in. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. <laughs> I thought any time it was the right time for a nap. I'm about to show you the problem with this sleeve. It's going to be very obvious. See, look. It won't lay flat. See it? 
It's torqued. There you go. That's a good example. See the, the seam is pulling to this side. This might seem like a no, not a big deal, but let me tell you that you will feel it. <laughs> you will definitely feel it. It was very, it's very close fitting. I, no, I didn't adjust it. <laughs> I wanted to sew it exactly how it comes first. But Zach said he had trouble with his sleeves on, on some of the things he's sewn. So I'm wondering if maybe that's it. Oh, shoot. This was the, what did he say? Did he say the X was the back and the circle was the front? Oh, there it is. I mean, his, the, usually the scoop side would be the front. We'll try. So that means that this side is the front and this side is the back. I meant to nip it. That's a little deeper than my seam allowance, but we're living on the edge. All right, so this is the back. Um, I'm just gonna hold it up to the armhole to see if it has ease in it. It better. It may not though. Not really. I can probably set that in without an easing stitch. How did that happen, the torquing? It came like that. Yeah, that's what I, I noticed that when we went to cut it out that I was like, wait, where's the front and the back? And um, when I folded it in half, I noticed that it <clears throat> isn't, oh, thanks, Anna. Thanks for subscribing. I know yours was something, Kirby, something like that. There's also no shoulder seam dart. I mean, a notch. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's well, say I was sewing a fashion pattern and I wasn't sure. I This is what I would do. I would actually go part way up and then go um, part way up the other side to see if there's ease in there. If I was being lazy and didn't walk it, you know, but I can kind of tell there's no ease in here. None. Hi, Allison. Um, I am making, I am using the um, sloper pattern on the freesewing.org site. And you put in your measurements, Allison. What made it that way? They made it that way. Oh, thank you, Zach. Yeah, they made it that way. I, I didn't make it that way. That's how it came to me. I'm not pleased by it. <laughs> if you're kind of like, why is she still sewing it if it has that problem? <laughs> If there's ease in this, um, I can barely tell. I could, I can probably set this without. Yeah, look at that. I did it. So it's a sharp um, cap, meaning it's pretty narrow and pointed. So maybe there's no ease, and that's it's fine if there's no ease on your sloper. But it does kind of, if you add it to your sloper, it's kind of nice later on, you know, because then you don't have to. There we go. How could I tell? Oh, when I folded it in half, here, I'll show you. So when I folded it in half, because this was why I was like, okay, which one's the front and which one's the back? And Zach kindly explained that the circle is the front and the X is the back. I like your comparison of an arrow. Hi, Patty, how's it going? <laughs> Then I was kind of like, all right, well, I can usually determine the front from the back by folding it in half. 
And I couldn't really see much of a difference at first. I thought I didn't really even see this tiny little bit scooped. But that is, this is fine. This is all you really need. Usually your back is a little bit bigger than the front. It's just scoop that much. That was my bad. I just didn't notice that. But then I, what I noticed was, see how the bottom here. So this is how you usually, your sleeve should be symmetrical from this point down. Always. Like, it's it's kind of in unique circumstances when it's not, but it's still balanced. The only time it's not is if um, uh, you're doing a sleeve that has like an elbow dart, like in tailoring things, or maybe there's some sort of design element. But in general, unless you're doing articulated things, I did a lot of articulated garments in outerwear so that, you know, the garment was like this and you'd, you'd probably marvel at the way those powdered pieces look like. They looked crazy. You know, you'd have this big swoop swooping underarm and that was because I was drafting for paddlers you know so in fashion though almost always your pattern should be identical from the underarm down all you're really concerned about is the cap when you're drafting um, to for the uh, to the go to the armhole so when I did that I noticed that this see how flat this is right here compared to this is curvy that's what made me kind of go, huh, that's interesting. I don't know if you can see through the paper, but you can see this is a curve and that's flat. So here, I'm gonna cut the um, seam allowance off so you can see. That's what kind of made me go, ding, 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 something's up there. And the thing is, I don't know much about free sewing to know, like, maybe they have a philosophy about that. It doesn't explain this, though. This is, I'm sorry, there's really no philosophy for this. <laughs> and it, this is so easy to fix, by the way. All you do is split the difference here and redraw your underarm line. That's it. That's all you do. That's all you do. It's really easy to fix. You don't have to do anything crazy. You just, because right now, if I match this seam up like this, this is what happens, right? This is what you want. You want your, your underarm to be parallel, but that obviously can't happen. So if I force it, isn't it, it's kind of painful even just to watch, right? If I force it, it's doing that, see? Flat, see, it's, it's like fine up there. It's not down here. All right, so anyway, enough about that. <laughs> All right, so let's um, put this on the dress form. I don't know if I can press this, but I'm gonna try. Let's look and see what my iron camera looks like, but I have a feeling it's crazy. Oh, that's right, it's my pattern table right now. <laughs> Love it. I've been changing things around. Nope, that's not what I want. All right, let's see. I'm going to iron this really quick. This isn't really where I'm gonna iron, but I'll just do it. I'll just do it a little bit right here. Can you hear me over here? Oh, that's cool, Jen. Yeah, so Jen, what do you know about them? I thought it was done by folks and then they had a Patreon. What I was looking for also is that a place to donate to them, just like a one and done um, donation, just for thanking them for allowing this, you know, like a custom block. I don't really want to sign up for the Patreon, but I wouldn't mind still showing support for the free pattern, you know? I don't want to join the Discord, sorry. I, I, I have Discord, um, I just don't use it. It's just too, it's too many communication platforms I'm managing. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, eh. All my favorite streamers have um, Discord, so it would be fun, but I just can't do one more. 
the way I put it to gamers is like, I just want to play games, you know? I don't want to be in Discord. <laughs> I'm such a baby about it. All right, so I'm just pressing this real quick so that it lays nice on my dress form. Hey, Ursula. I didn't know it was done by community. That is pretty interesting. But someone has to do the um, algorithm and all that, right, for the, um, I know you can't see everything I'm doing, sorry guys. All right. So I'm gonna put on my pattern table because it's still on the full screen. <laughs> so that our microphone still works. It's still working, right? That's so weird that those cameras are showing up in there now. That's totally fair, just curious. Yeah, okay, if that's okay. That's where the dev conversation, good point. And I know there's lots of people in my chat that do Discord. The coding is all, oh, very cool. So, um, in fact, I wanted to tell you all that, like if this is some sort of rabbit hole that you kind of want to go into, it looks like free sewing has a really big community, a really thriving community. And I think that if you're interested in that, you should check it out. It looks pretty cool. Oh, that makes sense, Jen. Thanks for telling us that, that's awesome. Thank you, Barbara. All right, let me zoom this out a tiny bit. We're going to put it to the test. I'm so excited. I've been waiting so long <laughs> to test this block out. How long ago did we, um, did I print this? Yeah, exactly, Mrs. Necro. Discord is awesome. It's so awesome. In fact, I, I, I wonder how Discord feels about Zoom. You know, like, I feel like they missed an opportunity. Discord was already there and thriving, you know? Okay. Oh, that's right. This is going to go to my natural waist, which is pretty high up these days, you guys. Oh, inter very interesting. All right, so this is definitely not going to fit. Let's put this on. Do you guys like it like this? Or I'm going to put it on inside out. <laughs> Discord is a uh, like a way to extend the conversation beyond a stream. A lot of streamers have them, um, and most streamers, that is how they communicate with their community. In fact, I would argue that a lot of streamers didn't even have Instagram until very recently. It became more popular among streamers to do that. But um, you can have, there's direct messaging, there's ways to communicate by video and microphone only phone calls it's it's a pretty powerful yet simple um platform and not technically social media because it's also private communities all right so definitely something is really crazy with the back here so i'm gonna can you guys see okay Yeah, but Zoom kind of took over. All right, so when we're looking at the back, it looks, you know, okay. But can you guys see my shoulders? They're way to the back, which is making this whole thing right here right up. So maybe it's a measurement I took. The armhole looks really deep as well. Like, it looks gigantic. So let me, um, oh, here we go. This is what I want. <laughs> What 
when I see tension, I just want to cut it and then see what happens. Kind of like a draping. What? Why? Okay, I was just making sure I'm not cutting my form. Yeah, they're back way too far. But the... All right, remember I only have a quarter of an inch seam allowance in the center front. And uh, that's my bad because usually you want like an inch seam allowance on your center front so you can kind of just easily overlap them. It just makes it a lot easier. So Malin, are you still here Malin? I know it's your bedtime, maybe you've taken off, but um, you said yours fit really good, right? I, maybe I shouldn't have been so cavalier with my measurement. I wasn't that cavalier. I really wasn't that cavalier. <laughs> I literally had a dress form to measure. Like it was very easy for me. The places I was cavalier was in the crotch depth, which does not apply here. I could make this work, but that's because I have a dress form. If I had to do this on me, it'd be a lot of work. Looks <laughs> like, yeah, well, I, my, sh my waist is way up here. Don't knock my waist, man. Come on. I'm not giving up my black licorice. <laughs> it's pretty loose in the back, too. See that? Yeah, it's very high. But this, I would say this fits, you know, pretty good right here. The bust isn't bad, honestly. This, and this is kind of a tricky area to fit. This, on the other hand, I don't know what the double is going on up here. But these are all fixable things, like adding in this amount right here, um, and then taking this down, you know? Where's my, um... So, yours fit really well. Okay, so there we go. Oh, you have majors. It was Libby that made it. You had to lengthen your center front by two full inches. Okay, okay. And then I also think like, um, making sure I didn't miss anything. So I also think like we aren't used to um, things ending at our natural waist. Yeah, exactly. That is exactly. <laughs> yeah, right, Jen? I might do that. Okay. So this is probably what I would do. I would take down this neck right here. I would add a little bit right here. Um, this waist is at my natural waist. Would I wear clothes there? No. But... I would probably take out a lot here and I'd probably do that by maybe adjusting my dart. Like this armhole is super deep. I don't know what going, what's going on there. I think I need to do my measurements again or check them. Maybe I, you know what, maybe what happened is I had a, a typo. I could have just had a typo. You know, I feel like the darts aren't too bad. This is the apex. I didn't sew my darts very nicely, but that is really close to my apex. I mean, like, that's pretty good. I would need to drop this down a little bit. And then, yeah, like, what is going on back here? Like this right here. Yeah, so yeah, we don't usually wear garments that stop here unless it's a dress. And the waist might be there, but it, there's a dress. So it's like when you try on the bodice of a dress and you're like, oh. And then you put the skirt on and you're like, oh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right, so this was just one trial. I would take in, these back darts are so tiny. 
Like, usually they're not... They don't... Sh did I just mark it wrong? You know? Like, I would do this. It, it feels like I could bring this whole thing in, too. Because see my, my, see how this is curving over? That is so weird. And I had my dress form to measure for that, you guys. You don't like the bust fitting? Why don't you guys like the bust fitting? I think the bust fitting looks pretty good. I think the back it doesn't feel good. There's my dad. Will you say hi? I'm live right now. Oh, my dad's here. <laughs> There's my dad. You can see him. You just got to wave. He's oh. dropping off one of my birthday presents that I forgot. Thank you. you thank go. you. Yay. I'm going to share it with them. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Right. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. <Bye>. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that, that garment always makes you look um, pregnant. Mrs. Necro. It looks like it's pulling. Well, it's not. This is just like, what if it did this? Would that look better to you? <laughs> See, now it doesn't look like it's pulling, right? <laughs> Yeah, but now he's gone because in the chat starts saying hi to him. I'll tell him you guys all said hi. <laughs> yeah, so look at this. My mom made me gardening tools. So, Kirby knows my mom. This is so my mom to do. What is this? I don't know what that is. So my mom's a really good gardener. And I was like, it looks like you got me barbecue tools. And she's like, well, I did, but they're not. So these are her favorite gardening tools. And she painted the handles. She's very in, very good at repurposing things. A knife. This is one of her favorite weeding tools. This too. And for the pokey pokey stuff. And then she made this. This is an oatmeal canister for the wrapping. <laughs> A calendar with the oatmeal canister. And I was like, oh, I love the canister. She goes, it's an oatmeal canister. <laughs> that was how she wrapped them up. But it's so smart, right? You can get used um, barbecue tools and then use them for gardening. And then she got me another pair of gloves. Whoa. Anyway. Gardening. Well, because of the pokey pokey stuff at my house, Michelle. You know, because of the great agave incident of 2020. <laughs> yeah, right, Sydney? I know. So once I pulled that up, so you can tell, see, it's not really pulling. But there's some issues for sure. Like this right here. I'll go back and look. I'll go back and look at my measurements. I said I'm cavalier, but I swear, you guys, I wasn't that cavalier, really. But this, it's a starting point, you know? I feel like this is actually pretty good. This is fixable. This bus start is actually now in the right, almost in the right spot. I would probably raise it up even and put my armhole back in here. I find my center back is right there. That is actually where the center back is. I nipped both. So there's my center back. If this went to my waist, it would look like this. I would pull this in. I would actually move this dart over here. Look right here. Am I making a lot of changes? Yes, but these are all pretty straightforward changes. 
Depends on how all in you want to be with one method. Yep. <laughs> Ceremony's not allowed to touch agave <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I honestly, I can't. Like, I got po poked by it the other day, and I had a flare-up. So it's definitely really, uh, I'm really sensitive to it. Okay. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just, I'm putting in the dart right here, and then just folding it up to the natural waist. I'm really short-waisted, you guys, and it's just getting shorter and shorter the more candy I eat. Ugh. So then this, this uh, shoulder, we can deal with that. The armhole is kookaburra. It's crazy that they actually make a sleeve fit this armhole on me, though. So. Your pat the dart legs aren't straight line. What? Are they curved? Oh, because you did the other one, the sleeveless one. <laughs> this fabric should go under the arm. You mean like, um... Look at that. This is my whole bra strap right here. <laughs> All right, what do you guys think? Could I make this work? I could. But um, I think first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and look at my measurements and see how maybe I had a typo. I, I honestly am kind of impressed that you could probably put in some pretty, some measurements that don't even go together and it would still make you something. That's pretty amazing. And it's so funny that you guys were thinking the bust wasn't good, but because I think it's not bad. It's a little full right there. So what I could do to kind of get rid of this is back the dart off maybe a little bit. Actually, what I would probably do is release the dart a little bit. I would make it a little bit, um, I would open it up. Because if you opened up the dart and made it a little less steep, What did I, what do I always say? Never backstitch your darts and cause you may have to take out the end. And this is the one time I've taken out the end. All right. What time is it? Oh, okay. Okay, good. I would love to try out more and more. Okay, see, look, now that's, see, now that's nice and smooth. Let's put this dart back in here, and we'll make it a little smaller. See that? That's better. Just making that waist dart smaller softened this, made it closer to the boob. My apex... I've kind of got a flat boob here. So the apex could be in lots of places. I always move it around. Oh, that's cool, Penny. <laughs> oh, Eliza, but could we make it work? Well, and that's the thing is like, a lot of folks don't have a dress form. So I'm making this look really easy. And I admit that. So I think like, I think it's worth a try because it's really not that hard to 
you have to have your measurements, but you're going to have to have your measurements for lots of different things. And you could at least maybe try a few different of these platforms. So the one that I linked earlier by the um, Kirby Sewing Collective. Can I copy? I can. Ooh, I don't need my keyboard. The heck? Why don't I always do it this way? This one right here. The Kirby Sewing Collective thought it worked really, really good. But it costs. It costs about $17. Here's the article. Yeah, exactly. See, okay, so that's the thing. On Saturday, we're gonna talk about um, good starting point patterns, okay? So Saturday, I'm gonna have a resource list for you guys and some good starting point patterns. I'm not going to be cutting and sewing them all to test them. But I think like if you guys have a pattern that you already like and use, it's a great place to start. I used to do that all the time. And gosh, 85% of the patterns that are drafted in the world, they don't start from a block. They start from an existing pattern because the designer will go to the pattern team if they're separate and say, I want to do style 8871, but I want a Peter Pan collar and a three quarter length sleeve and they have a sketch and that's it. And then you start usually with 8871 because you know that's the fit they want and you and you go forward. Unless the designer doesn't know the, the pattern shaping and you're like, well, yeah, but this sketch is a set in sleeve, but 8871's a raglan. Then they're like, oh, I'll be back. <laughs> and then they go do their homework and they come back with you to you and say, this is the fit I'm looking for. Hopefully you're not working with the designer that does that. I've worked with plenty that do that. And it's, if I could have had emoji faces to hold up at that time, it would have been the straight line. <laughs> You're like, I really can't make it fit that way if it's different. So, yeah, so I think, I, I like that idea. I like the idea of using something you already know. Yeah, and so if you guys want to try the draw from scratch, you can try it. Yeah, Eliza. So w with wearing ease, there's really not much. Like you're adding like an inch. If you guys are fitting this on yourselves, I'm going to recommend you add two inches of ease. I would add two inches to the bust circumference, and two inches to the waist circumference if you're fitting it to yourself. And I say that because when something is really, really small, it doesn't mean a close fitting. It doesn't mean it's small. It might just be close fitting. It is really hard to fit yourself if something is very snug, you know, and, and it doesn't mean that it might be fitting badly. It's just very close fitting. So it's really hard to be like, okay, I, I don't, you know, how to do that. Yeah, exactly. And so this isn't an easy, an easy project. It's just one of those things where you really can make a lot of headway if you just, you know, screw your head on tight and do the measurements, um, have some references like, okay, I like these patterns. These, these have a set in sleeve. I, I highly recommend you find a pattern that has a set in sleeve armhole, even if it's sleeveless, a set and sleeve armhole, not raglan, not cut on sleeve, not um, kimono style. Um, I want a armhole. Yeah, I'm gonna do my best, Julia. So, Julia, I don't know how early you were here. Good night, Sue. Um, I don't know how early you're here, but I'm gonna be using that list that Joe Hassler. Uh, posted on Instagram that was I think composed by the green violet which is uh, also an Instagram person and look at those because that list was up to a 70 inch hip and a lot of people were like yeah but what about a 70 inch bust you know like I'm not focused on the hip I have small hips so there's that and I think like if you're looking at um, if you have a big boob fitting centric 
um, you know, issue. I think cash rent's great because they, they uh, right up front, they're drafting for big boobs. And so I'm going to try and look at some of those pattern companies and try and as many as I can and narrow it down to, I think this pattern would probably be a good starting point at, from those pattern companies. Hopefully there's a good one in each one because not every pattern company has a, a, a armhole, like a sudden sleeve armhole and darts. You're kind of looking at like classic dresses and classic bodices and a, not, a lot of companies don't always just do that. Like Colette, Colette would be easy to find the perfect bodice block starting point. So... What was, what did, wait. Oh, cool. You have a chart for garment ease. That's great. It's still there, Malin. Yeah, I will, I will do a warning. There, there, there are some labels that Jenny used that were part of that list that really, it sounds like really, um, made a lot of folks uncomfortable. I didn't see anyone in the comments say they were uncomfortable with it, so it must have been something she got privately. Because she, well, she's posting someone else's list, but they had labeled the different sections of fit, um, and some people didn't feel comfortable with that. But you, if you don't look at that first page, um, you're probably not going to see that. Oh, I can probably put the link up here if you guys want. Uh, I need a keyboard. <laughs> I need a keyboard. I love this dress, but I put the pockets too high. After all my work, I put the pockets too high, so I got to lower them because I keep fiddling with them. Um... Yeah, so she retracts this here. So, sorry, my camera's probably in the wrong spot. All right, so, nope. So the, this is a list of pattern companies that go from to up to 55 inch hip because a lot of sewists focus on that hip circumference being a target where it doesn't work for everybody. And then there's some little notes off to the right here. Um, and then th this one is for up to 60 inch hips, up to 65 inch, and, and 65 and over. And then um, I recommend looking at this post as well and looking through the comments because there's other companies that are like, hey, you know, we do that too. Uh, where'd you guys go? There you are. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. Oh, no, what, Michelle? Drafting yourself would help in your understanding of patterns and also help you see. Yeah, I think that's great. And we talked about that at the beginning why you want to block maybe you don't want to block you don't need one if you don't want one you, you don't if you don't have to have one so but that is a good reference for pattern companies in the curvy size category i use curvy and i hope that doesn't offend anybody oh you're welcome i hope i'm helping <laughs> I am, am a straight size sewist. I'm doing my best to help folks um, have as many options as possible. You know, we have people that here that are, oh, oh, my pockets, yeah. We have people here that are petite, like my mom is petite, my daughter is very petite, is very slender, and they struggle too finding patterns. 
It's Joe Hassler. There's their kitty cat. Ray got robbed today. Ray got robbed. No kitty cat for Ray today. Yeah, but you know, the way I sewed these pockets, I can actually fix them. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do today. That's about it. So um, yeah, thank you, Joe Hassler. And that, I put a link to her Instagram above Allison's super chat. That will take you to her. But Joe Hassler, um, Jenny is also um, one half of Punk Frockers. I've been mentioning her a lot lately. I find their 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 podcast pretty fun. It's actually for me. It's a relaxing podcast, sewing podcast. Because I can't. I honestly don't listen to or watch a lot of sewing things, because my brain is already thinking about that stuff constantly. And so when I hear it, it's like starts making me. It just. It just is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of um, stimulation. So I usually do things I can't, I don't think about in the background. So, but I like their, theirs is kind of like, it's very chatty and, and, and uh, relaxed, um, but also um, conversational. So I don't know. It's not for everybody. I like it. All right. Um, I'm not even on camera. You guys don't even tell me. Thanks. Oh, Ray. Ray, get her kitty cat. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, I forgot. I didn't move it over. Ooh, I'm having that Farrah Fawcett hair. Sorry. Sorry, Adina. <laughs> okay. I think I need to wrap it up. <laughs> I'm getting punchy. All right, so Saturday, um, we're gonna focus on resources and maybe I'll have another one or two to try. Chilled cow. Did you see chilled cow? Wait, why are you saying that? Nice curtains, though. <laughs> yeah, right? Everyone loves my curtains. I've had them for like 20 years now, too. <laughs> Did you see Chilled Cow on my... Um... Oh, it's not up at the top of the bookmarks. It's usually there, though. Oh, yeah, we listened to Chilled Cow. That's it. Sorry, Libby. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, she and I both listened to the, the YouTube Chilled Cow because it's like such great background music i swear it's it's borderline modern elevator music libby and i think we probably need to face up to that so um and i just want to encourage you guys like there are a lot a lot of really talented sewists and pattern drafters out there that have done so many tutorials on how to draft your block or your sloper how to measure for it um, how, uh, resources on, you know, buying them, getting custom measurements out there. It's mostly why I'm not going to tackle it. It's not something I've ever taught. I'm really here to just help you do it. If you want help, if you have questions, I'm going to help you because I'm all about enabling you guys to have that tool if you want. And if you want help researching something, tell me I'm on it. I like doing that kind of thing. And, and tell the chat too. And if you wanna bring up things privately, feel free to email me or send me a d direct message on Instagram, okay? <laughs> it makes you believe in mind control. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I do have a how to drape a block or I draped mine last year and then I drafted one for measurements as well. So um, I've done it too. It's not something I've ever taught, but I just know how to do it. So so Saturday, by then, I will have a, a resource list. And we're going to talk about good starting points. I'm going to, I've been looking at the custom, there's custom options. And anyone's welcome to send me any resources. I will put it on the list. That's great. Um, yeah, you got to put work into it, though. But once you have it, you really just need to keep it like fitting you, you know? So if you gain or lose weight or maybe you have a injury that changes your body, you just, you know, try and update it every five years or so. Um, I have to do that. I had, I actually just threw away two blocks cause I was like, Sarami, time to get rid of these. Time to let it go, Sarami. That's not you anymore. You are a new you. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah, so we'll talk about custom 
measurement blocks and I'll try and give you a few options for that and where I got the sources for those. That's why I, that's why I only put that one in chat besides freesewing.org, which I think is a really great resource. Um, also that one by um, String Codes because the Curvy Sewing Collective recommended it and I trust them. Um, and then I'm gonna look at the ones on Etsy and places where you can just buy a block that comes in a few sizes and then you make your own and I can t I'll teach you how to grade between sizes if you need to. That's actually pretty easy to do. So, all right, you got this. You got this, all right? I'll see you Saturday. Have a good Friday. Yeah, I said both, Ray. Dang, two summers ago, I lost so much weight just eating watermelon and playing video games. Who to thunk? This year, there was a pandemic. Everyone was home, and I gained weight eating hot tamales and black licorice. Why didn't it work? <laughs> so, hey, <laughs> living my best life. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll see you on um, Saturday, and we'll continue this conversation. So thanks for the microphone help, you guys, too. I'll figure out what's going on with my face cam. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>